Narrative Journal of Travels Through the Northwestern Regions of the United States Chapter 4, Day 23 By Henry Rowe Schoolcraft Read by Frank Blissett June 15, 1820 the Sioux de Saint Marie is the largest of three rapids which impede the navigation of the river Saint Mary between Lake Superior and Lake Huron, and puts a final stop to the ship navigation of the northern lakes. It is situated fifteen miles below the foot of Lake Superior and ninety northwest of the island of Mackinac in north latitude 46 degrees 31 minutes, according to Mackenzie. The fall of the river at this rapid, as ascertained by Colonel Grashet, is 22 feet 10 inches, in little more than half a mile, which is nearly the same as the fall of the Ohio at Louisville in the distance of two miles. Unlike that, however, it can never, at any season of the year, be ascended with large vessels. Canoes and barges usually go up with half a load, the balance being carried over the portage, but in returning, descend with a full load. The bed of the river consists of horizontal strata of red and variegated sandstone, which have been much worn, broken, and carried away, and large fragments of it, together with blocks of mixed granite and hornblende out of place, are thickly strewed throughout the rapid, and by opposing the rush of water, throw it violently in all directions, and at the distance of half a mile give it the appearance of a bank of foam. Several wooded islands upon the inclined plain of the falls, by contrasting the deep green foliage of the hemlock, spruce, and pine with the snowy whiteness of the rapids, produce a contrast which has a pleasing effect. And with the shadowy outlines of the distant mountains of Lake Superior, the singular mixture of forest trees upon the shores and the fishing canoes of the savages, which are constantly seen at the foot of the falls, render it one of the most picturesque views of northern scenery. I have attempted to seize upon some of the prominent features of this scene in the accompanying sketch which may also serve to convey an idea of the unusual manner in which the maple and the pine, the elm and the hemlock, are intermingled in the forests upon the banks of this beautiful stream. The village of the Sioux de St. Marie is on the south or American shore, and consists of from fifteen to twenty buildings, occupied by five or six French and English families. Among the latter is that of J. Johnston, Esquire, a gentleman of rank, who, in the prosecution of the Northwest fur trade, settled here shortly after the close of the American Revolution, and married the daughter of a Chippeway chief. In the hospitality and politeness, which during our stay at the Sioux we experienced in this family, we have been made to forget our insulated situation, and to observe how short a participation in the blandishments of refined society is sufficient to obliterate the effect of the fatigues and privations of traveling. The site of the village is elevated and pleasant, and a regular plan appears to have been observed in the buildings, though some of them are in a state of dilapidation, and altogether it has the marks of an ancient settlement fallen to decay. Such indeed it is, having been settled by the French shortly after the occupation of Old Mackinac, and it continued for a long time the site of a French fort and Jesuit mission. Charlevoix, in 1721, speaks of this mission as one of no recent date, 
and Henry, in 1762, found here a stockaded fort with a small garrison under the command of a French national officer who was colloquially addressed by the title of governor. There were then four houses, two of which had been occupied as barracks, and the fort is described as seated on a beautiful plain of about two miles in circumference and covered with luxuriant grass and within half a mile of the rapids. Although no vestiges of the old fort remain, this description of the site is perfectly accurate at the present moment. It has always been the residence of Indian tribes, who are drawn to this spot in great numbers, by the advantages of taking the white fish, which are very abundant at the foot of the rapids. There are, at present, about forty lodges of Chippeway Indians, called Sultiers by the French, containing a population of about two hundred souls, who subsist wholly upon the white fish. The method of taking them is this. Each canoe carries two men, one of whom steers with a paddle, and the other is provided with a pole, ten feet in length, and at the end of which is affixed a scoop net. The steersman sets the canoe from the eddy of one rock to that of another, while the fisherman in the prow who sees, through the pellucid element, the prey of which he is in pursuit, dips his net, and sometimes brings up at every succeeding dip as many as it can contain. The fish are often crowded together in the water in great numbers, and a skillful fisherman in autumn will take five hundred in two hours. This fishery is of great moment to the surrounding Indians, whom it supplies with a large proportion of their winter's provision. For, having taken the fish in the manner described, they cure them by drying in the smoke, and lay them up in large quantities. These fish are preferred by most of our party to the Mackinac trout, their abundance may hereafter render them an important article in the commerce of the upper lakes. On the north, or Canadian shore of the river, there are also six or seven dwelling houses, occupied by French and English families, exclusive of the Northwest Company's establishment, which is seated immediately at the foot of the falls, and consists of a number of store and dwelling houses, a sawmill, and a boatyard. These are represented on the right side of the view of the Sud de Saint Marie. This company have also constructed a canal with a lock at its lower entrance and a towing path for drawing up barges and canoes. At the head of the rapids they have built a pier from one of the islands, forming a harbor, and here a schooner is generally lying to receive the goods destined for the Grand Portage and the regions northwest of Lake Superior. That was Narrative Journal of Travels Through the Northwestern Regions of the United States, Chapter 4, Day 23, by Henry Rowe Schoolcraft, read by Frank Blissett.